please be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Roy is our latest addition to the uh, New England team and also Long Island, I guess you'd say, and Connecticut too. Um, automation specialist. So he'll be another guy that you can call when you're, when you're out in the field and you're setting up one of these or any of our, any of our automation systems. Roy will, will, will be there. Um, he's gonna he's gonna go over the uh, Intelli Center. He brought in some some trainers for you guys to hit, hit some buttons on, so just to get you more um, up to speed on it. And he's gonna go over some stuff, uh, its capabilities. So, right, all right, next up, when we talk about the Intelli Center, one of the most important things I wanted to see is something that was gonna be able to be the same can as Easy Touch, Intelli Touch, and Intelli Center. It's the same can. Same exact dimension, same exact everything. So what does that tell us? It means that we can convert an Easy Touch or an IntelliTouch to an IntelliCenter very easily inside of 20 minutes. Huge, huge benefit. Uh, something the competition does not have the ability to do right now. So with the IntelliCenter, when we talk about that, just some key features, and we're not gonna go through PowerPoint presentations today, just to give you guys some ideas. Uh, with the IntelliCenter, the main frame or load center, if you will, has 10 breaker slots, 150 amp panel surface. We recognize that that service had to be a little bit bigger because we're using what more these days? Heat pumps. There goes 50 amps. Right before you start on a 100 amp panel, you're already halfway out of business before you go any further. So we recognize that the panel had to be bigger. So 10 breaker slots and 150 amp panel service. Inside the back of this can here, we want to open up to the electricity part of it, but we've got a system transformer. You'll have the uh, salt chlorination transformer below it, if that's what you choose to use. And when you look at the relay setup behind here, you're gonna find a filter pump relay plus four. And you have an additional row of five, so you can go up to 10 relays or 10 high voltage relays inside that panel. The IntelliCenter itself, gang, is a computer. One pool control, one spot control, there's a backyard control. It's a computer. If I look at this behind the main frame, this bezel is exactly what you're looking at. And if you turn it around, you'll see it's got a four by four or four by five main board. That's the brain. That's all there is. So that's something that you would see inside of a laptop computer, let alone what you see inside of a full automation system. So if you look at some of the other competitive controls, you'll see that the main board might go all the way from left to right, probably five by 10. So there's a lot more going on in a four by four frame than there is in a five by 12 frame. Because technology allows us to do that. So that being said, it's a Linux based operating system. It's a computer and it has direct Wi-Fi capability. So you'll see the direct Wi-Fi port right in the back. So it's plug and play, one end right into the Wi-Fi connection. And I will tell you this one thing I'm always trained to do wherever I walk into anywhere anymore, it's like I'm trained with Wi-Fi, right? Because now we've asked pool technicians to become what? Networking. Oh boy, right? That's the hard part. Okay, we can start up on time. So that being said, you have direct Ethernet, which can plug and play from here. And I stand by my word, you'll watch my drag above me. Start up on the shelf, I can see the router up there. So if this was plugged in here and it was plugged in there, you're off and running, it's good to go. Uh, of course, you also have the ability to run through the ingenious antenna. Of course, not quite as reliable, but the ingenious antenna probably has about an 85% success rate. Uh, so that's from a Wi-Fi standpoint. But remember I said to you earlier about conversion? What would you have to do to convert? Well, John mentioned the IntelliConnect which is just one single body of water. We want to have the ability to go from a pool to a pool spot combo to dual equipment, right? Pool pad, pool pump, pool pump, pool pump, pool pump, et cetera, et cetera. So all you have to do is simply go from the I-5 pool, you plug in a daughter card. It's a simple daughter card that has a pool spot combination, and it basically just plugs, and now you've gone from pool to pool spot combination. Not too hard, right? Pretty easy. And now the pool spa will show up if you had more than one body of water on your spa. Same thing if you want to go to dual equipment. You can put a dual equipment dollar card that plugs 
next to that. So you can have your body of water first, so boom spot, your dual equipment, or five relays, eight relays, ten relays, whatever you choose to have. And then additionally, you can go from four valve ports to ten valve port connections. So you could have laminate, deck jets, bubbles, rain curtain, waterfall, whatever it might be. If you need more than four valve ports, which is on the main I-5 system, then you have a valve port on board that would just plug in place after your body to the water. One more step forward, you can actually go and add an auto cover on it. Just to support two auto covers. Now, when I say support two auto covers, do I mean you can control the auto covers? No. Right? We can control what water is going to do on that auto cover. So if the cover is closed, we don't want the waterfall to spill over or whatever, deck jets to be able to turn on and engage. You can actually put 16 teleflow variable speed pumps on that can without the use of one high voltage relay. It's all smart devices. You can have two heaters, two heat pumps, and 16 variable speed pumps, which is 20 devices without using one of those relays. So super, super technology. So, that being said, back on the on the internet, what I mentioned about looking at the Wi-Fi up above me, if you're going with a direct Ethernet port, now you're, you're trusting the Ingenious antenna. That Ingenious antenna works on a 2.4 gigahertz signal. What does that mean? Well, there's 2.4 and 5.0, right? You probably know what you're streaming and horizons and Comcast to the world. You're going to need to have some tools because you need a good Wi-Fi. You don't have it, which I mentioned the M300. Uh, antenna extender, Wi-Fi extender. We also, there's a the one we recommend, our outdoor rated antenna, which is the AC600. Right? This guy comes with 15 foot of, of cable, so you can put it on the, you know, the eave of the pool house or whatever it might be. Uh, but you can, you can extend it up to 100 feet away. If you need to, with that antenna, you can push on screens. Here's the difference. This is a capacitive touchscreen, just like your phone. That's capacitive. So it relies on the conductivity within our body. We are the conductor. So all you have to do is touch your screen and you can rotate through the right? So that's capacitive. When we talk about a resistive touch screen, that relies on two different layers for conductivity metals. It's really indium tin oxide, actually oxide is what they call it. And unless you put pressure on a screen with a resistive touch screen, you don't make connectivity. And it can fall out of configuration it can fall out of calibration, and it can easily be damaged. So when a homeowner, we just said it already, when a homeowner starts pushing buttons and something doesn't work, what do they do? Just push harder. That's all they do. And when you push harder, it separates. The brain of an IntelliCenter is that 4x4, four 4x5 four, four card. The brain of a competitive control is that MSP display. So if that display gets broken, what have we lost? everything. You have to start fresh. You'll notice here on this valve, so if you look at this valve, and let's say you have a situation where a homeowner wants to leave something in position A, but instead of going all the way to position B, they want to stop it here, for a trickle effect into the spot. Well, you've got two arrows. One sends the actuator this way, the yellow sends it this way. All you do, hold it down. When you get the flow that you want, you see the flow, is the hard part. You slow down. That's it. And then you hit save. Right? So you've got a mode button, which is either auto or set or service mode. You're not changing it when you work. So that's all there is to setting one of these valves. It's a great, great feature. I think the valves are probably 20 something dollars. More than the regular valve, is that right? Yeah. yeah. And again, the directions are right on top of it. Fits anybody's valves. Uh, two inch, two and a half, three inch, maybe even four inch, I don't really know. Yeah, so it, it's, it's a great, great opportunity for you to utilize that valve at a low cost and never have to can actually use again. But that's that's really cool. Questions so far? No? Good. Okay.
I would, um, if you guys haven't done any programming at all, I, I would like to, you know, have a few of you guys that are in the field are going to see this, just at least get your hands on it. I know it's one thing here, we talk about it, so how easy it is, but I do want a few of you to at least have an opportunity to, to go through a couple of things, just basics and understand how that works. Thanks for watching.